Riocan is one of the biggest and most popular REITs in Canada, but they cut their dividend by 33% starting last month. I made a video about it saying that I was holding on to Riocan uh, because it's still a good REIT to hold for the long term and it's still producing some income every month. But let's be honest, uh, dividend reductions really suck, especially if you're an income focused investor like me, because all we really care about is that passive income. Share price, not so much since we just buy and hold, right? So single REITs are great, but they are definitely not immune to dividend reductions. This was one of the 12 lessons that I learned as an investor in 2020. If you haven't seen that 12 lessons video, make sure to check it out because it's the lessons that I personally learned as an income focused investor during 2020. So since I was close to breaking even on Riocan, I decided to sell it. But the main reason that I sold it is that I discovered a brand new way to invest in real estate. Middlefield Funds, one of my favorite fund managers who actually specialize in real estate, have created the first ever real estate split share fund. That's right, a split fund that focuses not on financials, but focuses on real estate. Pure genius. So let's check out this fund together uh, in detail because it might just be the best way to capitalize on the real estate recovery, which has already begun. So Middlefield Fund should ring a bell for you already if you've been a loyal subscriber. Uh, that's because they created and manage, in my opinion, the best real estate or the best REIT ETF ever. IDR, which is called the REIT Index Plus ETF. So IDR, in my opinion, beats hands down the very popular index style uh, REIT ETFs like XRE from iShares or VRE from Vanguard or even ZRE from BMO for really three reasons. Number one, IDR has a higher dividend yield. Number two, IDR uses a combination of active and passive management, whereas the index style uh, ETFs are completely passive. And who better to manage a REIT ETF than Middlefield? They actually specialize in real estate. And guess who manages IDR? It's none other than the president and chief investment officer at Middlefield, Dean Orico. And reason number three, uh, IDR focuses on the two safest real estate sectors, uh, industrial and residential, which is much safer than uh, you know retail or office, for example. So I go into detail about IDR and two other REIT ETFs that I really like uh, in another video. So make sure to check it out if you haven't seen it, if you want to learn more about those. Now, I love split funds. You all know that they are a very unique investment product that were really designed for one thing, high and consistent income. They do this exactly like covered call ETFs. They use a covered call strategy, but on top of that, they use leverage. Now, I won't go into detail about split funds and how they work in this video. You can watch my split funds explain video for that. Some are better than others, of course, uh, like everything else. But the sad thing about them is that most split funds seem to focus all on financial stocks like Dividend 15 or Financial 15 from Quadravest or SBC and LBS by Brompton. But there are some that don't focus on financials like ENS, for example, which holds uh, Enbridge, the, the biggest energy company in Canada. I absolutely love that split fund, which is managed by, you guessed it, Middlefield. And it was their only split fund until now. So I want to introduce you the first ever split fund that focuses on real estate, the real estate and e commerce split fund uh, by Middlefield. So the stock symbol is RS and it's listed on the Canadian stock market or, or on the TSX. So it started trading in November 2020. So this is a really a brand new uh, split fund, guys. So let's explore the fund together in detail. These are the questions that I want to answer. What REITs does this fund hold? Uh, what real estate areas does it cover? What's the dividend yield? Does it use a covered call strategy? Do they use leverage? If so, how much? Um, does it have that $15 unit nav threshold rule like all the other split funds have? And why was this split fund uh, created in the first place? and how does it compare to the existing um, ETF that they already have, IDR. So we can find a lot of info uh, already on the fund's website and fact sheet. So let's check it out together. 
So here's the uh, fund uh, website, guys, Middlefield Funds. This is the homepage of the fund where you could read up all about this new split fund. So as you could see here, the stock symbol is RS for the Class A shares. Those are the ones we're interested in. We're not interested in the preferred shares, which are uh, listed on a completely different ticker, rs.pr.a. So the distribution frequency, that's the dividend frequency for the Class A shares is monthly. And as you could see, this one just started trading. So if we click on uh, the highlight sheet, that's where we'll start getting a lot of information so this is the highlight sheet it basically tells us what the premise or what the idea is in, in, in terms of making the split fund um, so as you could see here it's it's a high conviction initial portfolio of 15 leading REITs and real estate companies so you have industrial uh, or logistics and specialized which is data center so this is really your industrial exposure plus what they call long-term value or, or uh, apartments right so if you go down, you could see the breakdown between industrial and data centers and long-term value. So uh, in terms of industrial, there's really you know a lot of growth and e-commerce. E um, so these are the types of REITs that are going to be on this side, on the industrial side, Granite, Equinix, WPT. So really, really big uh, industrial REITs. And on the long-term value side, so on the residential side, you have the biggest REIT in Canada, which is uh, Cap REIT or Canadian Apartment REITs. You also have Real Can, you have CT REIT, which uh, has the uh, Canadian Tire Store. So their premise here is that it's currently trading at a significant discount to intrinsic value, which we all know, right? The, re the, the real estate is pretty... Uh, pretty undervalued right now so uh in, in interest rates to remain low that just means REITs can borrow more money to grow quicker so it's all good stuff for REITs all um all on the up and up in terms of real estate so in terms of the key points i won't read the whole thing here um, but uh, you should definitely check out this uh, highlight sheet if you're interested in the split fund so you see here just more of the reasons why um, they created th this split fund so consumer confidence should continue to grow corporate balance sheet are expected to strengthen uh, real estate valuations across all issuers are extremely attractive due to significantly discounted uh, trading prices which is true and uh you know continued low interest rates as well so these are really the reasons and the themes of why they created this split fund in the in the first place and they go down here uh if you go down they will break down you know some industrial some specialized just a couple of uh stats in terms of the properties they're investing in which is pretty much industrial uh warehouses uh data centers mobile towers so that's all industrial and then of course you have the long-term value apartments seniors housing some office as well so you know high quality canadian reits well located properties are trading at significant discounts so you could see all the stats here if we go back to the home page another thing you should always look at is the fact sheet which i'll go in a second but if you click on nav you could actually see um, how much each share is worth so the class a which is what we're interested in is uh worth fourteen dollars and eight cents the preferred is uh you know the preferred shares for the for a split fund is usually always always ten dollars so if you add this number with this number that's the unit nav so it's over twenty four dollars very very strong and if we click on fact sheet, we'll get a little bit more information about this REIT. So uh, you see here the annual management fee, 0.85. Uh, you see here's Dean Norico, a picture of the president who manages this fund. Um, you could see the initial leverage 1.7x, 8 yield on the issue price. The issue price was is the... Uh, price that they started the fund at which was $15 so it's really it actually went down to it's about $13 now so that's why the yield is actually 9% now not 8% so a really really great time to pick this one up guys and if you go down you could actually see this is the important part the breakdown so you see the top 10 holdings in um in this fund uh, and it's all names you'll recognize if you know REITs right you have Brookfield Property Partners which is a lot of um, office and retail primarily the Canadian Apartment Properties REIT that's the biggest REIT in Canada by the way it's not Real Can I think Real Can is in second place you also have Crombie you have CT Real Estate there's Real Can there's Smart Center so these are your residential or your long-term uh 
uh, value REITs, what they say here. So that incorporates 43% of the fund and the rest uh, is uh, 56% on industrial and data centers. So the bulk of it, the majority is really in industrial and data centers, things like WPT, industrial, uh, Granite REIT, uh, Dream Industrial, Summit, and there's a bunch of other ones which we don't see because these are just the top 10. So there you go, guys. A lot of information on the fact sheet and on the highlight sheet. I strongly suggest you check it out as well. So that should answer a lot of questions already, right? Whenever I have questions or I want to research a particular fund, um, I, I want to know what the fee is, the management fee, the objective, the holdings. It's always best to go to the fund's website directly. It's 2021, guys. And from what I've seen, every single ETF or income fund or split fund has its own webpage with all the information, with a ton of info. So that's where you should go to learn about them, not through your broker, which could have you know old information or outdated information. And if you can't find the answer on the fund's webpage, you could always email the fund manager. You will be surprised how quick they answer and how accurate their answers are. I mean, they're the creators of the fund, right? So that's exactly what I did for RS, for this split fund. So let's answer all those questions that we had at the beginning together with all the information we, have, we now have. So let's go through the questions. Question one was what REITs does this fund hold? So like we saw, uh, the REIT holds about 15 REITs altogether. It focuses mostly primarily on industrial real estate, but also has what, what they call long-term value or apartment or residential REITs, things like Rio Can, Smart Centers, uh, Crombie, Canadian Apartment Buildings. So really the big boys when it comes to residential, none of those small ones, but it does focus a lot on the industrial REITs like Summit Industrial, Dream Industrial, et cetera, et cetera a lot of REITs that focus on e-commerce or, or data warehouses, which is capitalizing on the rise of e-commerce. Uh, and question number two, what real estate areas does it focus on? Like I just mentioned, it focuses more on industrial, about 56% industrial e-commerce and the rest in residential or long-term apartment value, like they say. Question number three, what's the dividend yield? Well, it's very easy to calculate because the uh, the dividend for the annual dividend for the class A shares is $1.20, like a lot of the split funds already. So right now with the share price is under, uh, is a little over $13, something like that. The annual dividend yield is a really nice 9%, which is really, really phenomenal and a couple of points above IDR. So that's where that leverage plays in. You, you, you're putting in that leverage to get more yield, to buy more shares, which gives you more yield. So uh, question number four, do they use a cover call strategy? So this is something that we didn't really see in the, them talk about in the fact sheet. So what, what did I do? I emailed them directly and they answered me within 24 hours. Right Right now they are not using a cover call strategy and the reasoning that they that they told me was uh, because they're they're really confident in the low prices of REITs right now and on the recovery so they want to capitalize a lot on the recovery so this makes complete sense so uh, cover call uh, obviously uh, you know give you more yield in terms of uh, overall yield because of those call options that they sell but it dampens or reduces the stock price uh, potential for growth. So uh, they said that they're not ruling out uh, doing a covered cost strategy in the future, but for now they're banking on really they'll make their gains with the share price, which I agree completely on that. Uh, another question, do they use leverage? If so, how much? Like we saw in the fact sheet, 1.7x leverage. That just means that for every dollar of equity, they have 70 cents of debt or leverage. So compare that, is it high, is it low? If you compare it to their other split fund, ENS, it's 2.0x leverage, which means for every dollar of capital, there's a dollar of debt. So definitely a little bit less leverage than ENS, for example. Uh, so that's how much leverage they have. Um, Another question, do they have that $15 unit nav threshold rule like the other split funds have? So if you under, if you already know about this rule, that's great. You, you probably understand that. If you don't, well, there's a rule with most split funds where the unit nav and the unit nav is with a value of one share preferred and one share of class A together. If that is less than $15, well, the dividend cannot be afforded or it will not be paid out to the class A shares. But if we look Look at the unit nav of RS right now. It's like $24, way above the $15 uh, limit. It's actually the highest unit nav I've ever seen for a split fund, higher than ENS, which is like a $20. Uh, so it's a really, a really a safe split fund, if you ask me. I don't think there's any chance in hell where the unit nav could go under $15 unless there's some sort of crazy real estate crash with, with that already. It's already happened, so I don't think there's going to be another one. 
Um, last question, why was this split fund created in the first place? How does it compare to IDR? Well, it compares to IDR. It's basically in terms of holdings, it's almost identical. It really has a lot of the same holdings. It focus, they both focus on industrial and residential, which is great, very safe. And why was it created in the first place? Well, it to capitalize on the real estate recovery because of the real estate crash uh, last year in 2020. So that's the real reason they created it. A really nice way to be able to invest, to recover uh, uh, on the real estate recovery. And because of that leverage, you're really amplifying uh, your gains. So those are the answers to the questions. So there you have it, guys. I'm really excited about this new split fund because we now have a higher yielding alternative to IDR. RS holds many of the same stocks like IDR and is managed by the same fund manager. So I personally did decide to sell off my Real Can shares. Don't forget, Real Can is already in IDR and it is already in RS anyway. So about $12,000 worth, I invested all in RS and uh, the new split fund. Uh, so uh, am I saying to sh sell all your, your real can shares if you still have some or any other single REITs uh, that you have to invest in RS? Of course not. I mean, I don't believe in putting all my eggs in one basket. You all know that I already. I still like holding uh, some single REITs and I will continue to do so. Uh, my portfolio is personally is pretty heavy on real estate, but that's just because it makes sense for me personally, because I don't own any physical property. So your situation might be a, a bit different. So I think that owning real can on its own or any other single read can be a great investment for long term for both growth and income but considering the yield the great management the strategy that this spl split fund has it's my new favorite way of investing in real estate hands down so i'll definitely still keep idr as well but going forward i'll definitely be more keen to add to my position in rs if i want more uh, real estate exposure so the yield is not insane it's nine percent it's not crazy like other split funds but this is not a pure income play i just want to point that out it's also a growth play because they're not writing covered calls on it right now and i really agree with that logic because reits are undervalued so they're banking that the stock prices will go up pretty high selling cover calls does generate more income more yield but we know the downside right it could dampen your share price upside so um obviously they're not doing it now but they could be putting it in the future so just keep that in mind the number one reason I really love this fund or this split fund is the unbelievable strength of the unit nav. Like I discussed, it would be almost impossible for the unit nav to go under $15. I really cannot see it. Uh, so I don't think RS will ever miss a monthly dividend payment. Uh, what do you guys think about this new split fund? Is it interesting? Is it not interesting? What's your favorite way of investing in a real estate? Don't be shy. Let me know by dropping me a comment below. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. The channel is growing beyond my uh, wildest dreams. We're closing in on almost 10,000 subscribers, which is really mind-boggling to me. Uh, every time I look at YouTube analytics, I always get surprised. And trust me, I'm not a person who gets surprised much. I'm not really an emotional person, uh, which is probably why I'm so good at investing. But uh, we keep getting a lot of positive comments and emails from all over. People are telling me how I changed their lives, uh, which is really incredible. It really motivates us to keep going and I could promise you that the best is yet to come. Just to give you a, an idea, I have over 50 videos in my back, back pocket that I still have to do. Um, so th th that's on top of the reoccurring ones like the monthly stock picks and my portfolio updates, etc. So um, I'm also getting more and more emails and comments from Americans asking uh, how do I invest in these stocks if I'm in the US. So to my American friends out there to the south, uh, my next video will will be for you. I'll go over some of my favorite US listed stocks designed for passive income. You guys have no shortage of no shortage of options uh, on the US markets. Trust me. Uh, I love the US. I love capitalism. So the next video will be for you. Of course, please visit our website, guys, PassiveIncomeInvesting.ca to access my first ever digital product, the ultimate dividend passive income investing package, uh, all the stocks you ever need to really build your own portfolio. It comes with lifetime updates, so you only need to buy it once in case an updated version comes out, which we are planning to do by the end of the year. And it will also include a lot more U.S. listed stocks. So I'm, I'm currently in research mode. I'm looking and hunting down uh, more U.S. listed stocks. 
uh, because of all the interest from Americans. So uh, don't forget, you could also book a one-on-one -on -one video call consultation with me personally. If ever you have any questions to ask me, if you want me to review your existing portfolio, if you want help building a new portfolio, whatever your needs are, I will do my utmost to help you and answer all your questions. It's crazy. I'm getting booked left and right. I'm already booked until end of March pretty much. So uh, a lot of people need help and I'm really glad to help you guys out. I love doing it meeting new people all walks of life it's been great a really great experience so don't hesitate to book a one-on-one -on -one with me don't be shy you could ask me anything you want and we'll just have a nice conversation as always uh, please support us please support this channel by hitting that like button it's free for you and it helps the channel grow uh, so it's a win-win i would really appreciate it finally make sure you're subscribed not to miss out on our future content on passive income investing as well as our community post uh, which i've been using a lot more lately to uh, give you news of a lot of the the stocks that i own so if you own a, you know a lot of the stocks that i own personally make sure you're subscribed because if there's anything big or any big news on any stocks i will usually do a community post about it so uh, also follow us on instagram and facebook we're there as well if you use those so with that take care guys stay safe of course and see you next time